I'm not seeing it. There, it's coming. Okay, I think we're live. We are. I see it. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome back to another uh, episode. That's how I feel like it's a talk show now of Let's <laughs> Talk. And uh, I'm really excited about who we have on the show today. Uh, number one, because this guy is incredible at what he does, but he's one of my best friends. And uh, he's very knowledgeable in many fields, but specifically on what he does and then in leadership and a lot of other area, areas. Um, Richard, I've known him for many years, actually. Uh, we've been in business together for years, and we, I actually was a client of his uh, right after we had our first child. And uh, he has done so much for my wife and I, and I know uh, also... Uh, Tom has known him for many years, but why we asked Richard to be on the show today is because this gentleman has had a lot of dreams, struggles, and victories. Both him and his wife have had a lot of success in business, in many businesses. Uh, he's, a, he's a certified financial planner, but that just sounds like very small for what this guy can do and what he has done. And the amount of people, um, how we actually started to become friends is a lot of the people that I started to get to know, they all knew Richard and they all knew me. And that sort of brought us closer together. And today I've watched Richard help so many people, whether it's a family or a business, move forward financially, leadership wise in many different areas. And uh, I'll tell you one of the biggest reasons why he has the success he has is because his wife's incredible. <laughs> um, <laughs> she has just got such a huge heart. They're such a great couple together. But I'm excited to have Richard on with us today. And I know that uh, we've got a couple questions for him, but um, the company that he actually owns is RK Life Strategy. Stra RK Life's, <laughs> I, I, uh, I wrote it down and, <laughs> and the kids started screaming and I forgot to put the, what is it? It's RK Life, but there is. RK Life Strategies. Strategies, yeah, okay, that's right. The, 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 it's missing off of my page, but can't read, uh, can't read your writing. <laughs> is really um, is a, is something that I know my wife and I, like I said, we've been we've been a client of Richard for years, and he's helped us out in so many different ways. So I'm excited for all of you guys to hear from him. But first, I'm going to pass it over to Tom, and Tom, you can kick this thing off. Awesome, thank you, Paul. Thanks, Richard, for joining us today. Or we we've, we've been excited for this. Uh, opportunity to speak and uh, I want a little bit of history actually. Um, Richard and I met uh, through uh, a, networking uh, a networking group in Welland, uh, Networking Niagara, where um, uh, business owners get together and, and refer uh, business back and forth to each other and, and uh, more than that it, it becomes a, a, a group of people that build relationships and, and uh, um, and that's why you, you're comfortable referring people that you know and, and, and you know that are, are, in, are, are building their business with integrity and, 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 uh, and quality. And through that association with that organization, meeting Richard, Richard actually introduced us to Paul. And that's how uh, uh, we got together as friends. And, and so, so really for me today, I'm, I'm here together with two great friends that I've known for four or five years now, maybe a little longer. And um, um, just am blessed to have had the opportunity to have met both of you and, and, and uh, really changes in my life have come as a, as a result of that and, and, and huge changes. And I, and I actually take the opportunity to thank both of you right now because uh, uh, I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. So on with it, uh, Richard, um, great to see you. Um, tell us a little bit about um, what inspired you to become an entrepreneur in the first place. Well, it, it's a bit of a different story. Before I got involved with finances, I worked at uh, Family and Children's Services in Welland. So I had graduated with uh, my psychology degree from Brock. Originally, I was from Toronto, so stayed in Niagara because I enjoyed the area and was working at Fax for six years, dealing with kids that had been abused and physically, mentally, sexually, everything. And I just said, and I had tried teaching at the college at the same time. And I, we had just started our family and uh, I was looking for something different. And we, Tom, if you remember, Paul's probably too young, remember social contract days and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, 25, 30 years ago, we went through all that. And there wasn't much to do in my field. So I took a leap and started with London Life actually. 
and uh, was able to take a six month leave of absence from fax and see whether I could uh, make a go of it through London Life. And they had just started to change their whole value proposition from just being life insurance to wanting to develop financial planners. So it was, you ask when, have I dreamt to be an entrepreneur all my life? No, I, I don't think, I think I wanted to be a, a hockey player or a football player when I was young, not a, an entrepreneur, but I also didn't think I would be working at, at Family and Children's Services. So life sort of takes you different places. And it took me to London Life. And I met a, an individual by the name of Rick Spring who said to me, you know what, you can make a go of this. And he, he spent a summer um, playing on my slow pitch team. And he said, listen, he goes, I see you have a big heart and you can help a lot of people. But he says, you need to get the education in this industry. And he just told me to go out and he said, you know, ignore all the noise that's going on around you and get your different licenses and go get your certified financial planning certificate. He said, if you do that, he goes, and you get through all of that education, then you're committed. You're in the business. You're not just sort of doing it. It's not just a job. You're not a salesperson. Um, and right off the bat, yeah, you you start delivering checks to families and helping people retire. It um, it started out as a job, but it's become a passion. Um, I just love seeing that I can tell somebody they can leave the factory or leave whatever job they're in that maybe they're not as enthused about as they used to be that they can retire um, or you know help somebody plan to buy their first house or to get ready when before the first child comes to to sort of get their sort of ducks in a row and that and that self-satisfaction just that's what drives me every day to keep wanting to do what I do I, I don't really feel like I'm working it, it's just uh, it's a good just a good day after day experience I think I think you 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 hit it on, on the head when you said that the fellow who, who Rick sent sent you to to get the education because and said you could be successful at it because you have a good heart and, and you really do I mean it's it's your concern and your caring for other people that 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 really makes you successful and and, and you know I, I think your wife and, and even in your children you instill that the, those values and and I think any good businessman that that has those values will be successful and it's it's really why you are the success you are today. That's Tom, can I just say one thing? Yeah. Um, I may say more than one thing, but <laughs> that's okay. We know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cue. Um, I have a drink. But, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Richard, one thing, you know, they say that be careful who you get your advice from. And a lot of the times people, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll say, oh, I, I don't need to read or I don't need to invest into myself. I can just get it for free on Google. And I always say that free information is the most expensive information you'll ever get because it costs you a lot of money. And I know you personally and hearing your testimony and knowing that one of the reasons why I respect you so much is not because of your credentials and all that. It's because you live in a glass house. I mean, not only, yeah, you guys have done very well, but you're the kind of person that people should take advice from. Why? Because you don't just say it. You guys live it. Like you live a great lifestyle, but you work hard you play hard, you make sure that you invest time into your marriage, you invest time into travel, you invest time into your kids. And it's balance across the board. It's not like, I just wanna get rich. No, it's balance. And for me to be able to learn from someone like you, it's been an honor, I mean, to have you as a friend and to bounce things back and forth. But it's, it's guys like you that I'll tell you, we're blessed to be able to um, come to for certain things. And your story, why I was excited to have you on here is because your story is great and it's not it's not that it was what's happening you're still living it every single day you're mm -hmm. living it and i'm excited to hear a little bit more about um really some of the struggles that you went through and, and how you came through those struggles and stuff like that well probably the biggest struggle was just the first five years into the business like i said i i grew up in toronto came to brock for school worked at fax for six years and then you go into business for yourself really um, because we all became self-employed uh, financial advisors when I started. And who did I know? I didn't know Paul Frusi. I didn't know Tom McIntyre. I knew, I knew a handful of people 
And, at, and Paul, you'll probably not believe this, but I was very shy back then when I started. Um, I didn't like talking to anyone. Um, they had us go knock on doors. They had us, you know, cold calling people. And, but I had one thing that kept poking me in the ribs. I did not want to go back to working at Fags. And the one thing, it, maybe just that stubbornness that I had was, I have to make this work. And the only way I'm going to make this work is I got to do those things that are uncomfortable. Um, and especially at the beginning. And I, I, I always pick the brain of older advisors that have been around a while. And I had talked to um, a couple of them and they said that three to, to five year mark is the most important. Um, because if you can survive the first three, five years in any business, I think then you build some momentum, you build some clientele, you're getting some repeat business, but you also get a bit of confidence that, you know what? Yeah, you can learn a lot. You can be very book smart, but book smart and life smart, I think are two different things. Um, I don't think you can be one or the other. You need both. Um, but if you can't apply what you've learned, you're not going to help anyone. Um, but I did have to get that, you know, the, the basics, the backgrounds, the education part. And then once I did that, it was, I think the biggest thing I learned was for every family I went to sit down with, I listened to their story. So what was their struggles and what were they hoping to achieve? And often it helped me realize what we were going through as, you know, as a young family and as a new business. But that time period was, at the beginning was probably the hardest and probably the time I put the, the longest hours in, did the most education. But it, some of it was just, you know, perseverance, get educated, but make sure you're, hang, like you said, watch out what, where you get your information. Mm -hmm. It was also making sure that you were hanging out with the right kinds of people. Um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you can hang out with the wrong type of associates and they'll lead you down not the right path, if you know what I mean. Um, I, I've never sat there and said, well, I want to make this much money or, or anything like that. I've always said, if I take care of enough people, at the end of the day, we'll be fine. We'll be taken care of because I've done what I was supposed to do. Um, and like I said earlier, I mean, the biggest satisfaction I got is just seeing the faces, whether it's somebody crying and we're giving them a hug when they've lost a loved one or, or they're laughing or crying when I get to tell them that they can retire tomorrow. And, you know, they just, you see some sense of relief um, and you have a small part in that, you know. A few things there. Um, I think Paul, you say it uh, quite regularly. You are who you associate with, and, and and if you hang around with bank robbers, you may not rob a bank, but eventually you'll probably drive the getaway car. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you, you to touch on a few points there too, Richard. You talked about um, um, perseverance, really stick with it, don't quit, never give up. And, and I think sometimes people get to that point where where they they're almost successful, and then they just say, you know what, I can't do it anymore, and they quit and and try something else, and and and. You know that that that's so true. I mean, sometimes you got to know when to give up. That that maybe it isn't the right thing, but but when you've got the right thing and it's in your heart and you know you're headed on the right way, don't give up. And also um, work through your fears. I, I, and I know how hard it can be knocking on doors um, of people you don't even know just 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 to approach them and say, "Hey, I'm I'm Richard. Look at me." Uh, and I, I, I know I, I did in the eighties, I did door to door aluminum siding sales. I was a tin man and, uh, I hated it. And, and, and I was, it was meek at the door. I wasn't, wasn't great at it, but I still sold some stuff and, and, um, um, got past the fear and, and, and actually went and knocked on the doors and, and it, it, it led to some success in that area. So true. Yeah. Fear, fear is the biggest liar ever. Right. I mean, we, there's so much success people can have in their life and it's the fear of the unknown that stops so many people and really the ones that step forward and do it and I mean we've all succeeded in different things and we've had success together after you're past the fear and the success comes it's like wow that was so easy like mm -hmm. 
and especially if you're plugged into the right information and you're uh, hanging out with the right association. I mean, all me and my friends now we hang out, we're lifting each other up, right? Mm -hmm. Where in the past it was different. You'd hang out with people and I'm not putting anybody down, but in even in school, right? It was more about tearing each other down as friends, right? Or you talk positive one second, you turn your back and then you got to be careful because that's poison. It's poison in your life. It's poison in your family. It'll poison your bank account. <laughs> They'll poison everything, right? You really got to be careful. Well, I think too, the other thing is, is not comparing yourself to even your friends. Um, you know, often I'll be asked, well, you know, do you try to strive to, to have as big of a business as John Smith? And I'm like, oh, John's a friend of mine. But you know what? His goals, my goals, they're two different things. Great. Uh, Paul and I might get along very well. And you'd say, well, they, they seem pretty in line and what their philosophies and everything are, but we might have different things that drive us. Um, I think too, when you're, to, success is your own definition. Um, I'm going through an exercise right now and it's asking, you know, you know, what are your goals for the next three years, one year, three months? Um, there could be a hundred different answers. They're all right if they're right for you. I mean, right. don't ever compare yourself. And we tell our kids this all the time. You do what you want to do and what's right for you and what are your goals. Don't worry about what your best friend from high school is doing because that they're going down their own path. You go down yours. That's and, right. you know, if you start comparing incomes or whatever the measurement is that you want to compare, you know, size of business or whatever, you you'll never be satisfied because somebody will always be bigger or making more money. But those people also maybe aren't necessarily the most happiest because they're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and never see their kids or should be divorced, but they don't have time to file the papers. I mean, what success? Yeah. Happiness at home and happiness at work. And you know what? And I go to bed at night and not too many worries. And that's so true about happiness at home. And I know you guys, you, you, you and Maureen are a great couple and, and, and we know that you, 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 you can see how well you get along and, and, and um, um, it, it comes out, it shows in your whole family for sure. Go ahead, Paul, you were going to say something? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just about to say it again. And then I realized <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> It went so, away. So, so Richard, Richard, some of the some of the books you've read. I know, I know, we've we've um, we've read um, Attitude is Everything, and I think you were pretty strong in that one for a while. That that. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he, we all go through slumps, right? And yeah. I, I've got probably a bigger uh, um, collection of books than I ever need. But it's funny. Certain times you go through different things, and sometimes you need to. You need to read something that just, it doesn't have to be some big, you know, manual or, or what. It, um, Jeff Keller wrote Attitude is Everything. It's a small paperback. You could probably read it easily in an afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just some basic principles. And yeah, you, your attitude is everything. Yeah, if absolutely. you're always looking at things as the glass is half empty, you're never going to be happy. Yeah. Um, and, and we, again, I, we say that to our kids all the time, you know, is the glass half empty or half full? I always think it's half full and there's still lots to, to, to get from it. Um, but you can always fill up your glass some more. And I think reading always helps you keep your cup full and yeah. just look for the, th the good things to read, you know, ask friends what, what's out there, what are good, you know, go on Amazon chapters, read book reviews, find things that, um, that speak to you, whether it's in your industry or just about life or, or whatever you think tugs at you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that, that changed uh, my life from, from, from the both of you guys is, is, is reading and, and, and reading the, the right books that uh, um, changed my attitude and changed my, my thinking towards not only my family, but but my my associates, my 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 clients, and everything, and even going into the grocery store and 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 engaging with the the cashier in a positive and uplifting manner, they notice it makes a difference. They say, you know, you guys were great to have here today. So many people are 
are, are, are miserable, but you guys are, thank you for coming in and thank you for making my, my day a, a, a joy. And, and that mm -hmm. comes from, from that exact thing is reading. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, <clears throat> attitude is definitely everything. Um, and, and you could feel it today. Right now you go out in public and some people's attitudes are just not in the right spot. And the reason why is because, I mean, we need to know what's happening in the world, but too much negative will destroy you, right? And I think we're at a time right now where things are starting to, to, to come back to normal. And, um, and I mean, I don't think as a planet we're ever normal, but uh, starting to get back to what we're used to. And now's the time where you need to pull yourself out of that slump. And on, you saying attitude is everything. I know we read that book every once in a while, and I think it's a great time. Everybody should read that book. Mm -hmm. um, because attitude is everything. And right now, a lot of people's attitudes in the gutter. Um, and a lot of the times you'll never move forward. If everybody else can move forward, you'll be like, why not me? Well, cause your attitude stinks and it's got to change before you move forward. And uh, I mean, if, if anybody, if you're watching this, um, and, and maybe that's something that's holding you back, start fixing your attitude. Right. I think that I know mm -hmm. there's, there's a handful of people on here right now. And then there's people that will jump on later and watch this in the, in, in the future, man, if that's the one thing that we can help someone with, and that's something that that's what I love about Richard and Tom. I mean, we can have a bad attitude sometimes, but we're not afraid to change it. We're not afraid to say, Hey, your attitude sucks. We need to fix it. Right. If somebody tells me that my friend, I'll be like, yeah, okay. That's the first thing I need to do is fix my attitude. So not that Richard's um, ever given me a, not that Richard's ever given me a cuff in the back of the head or anything. Right. <laughs> I would never do that, Tom. <laughs> I, I just want to say one thing. If there's, there's, there's a handful of people watching this, and we've never done this before. But if you have a question for Richard, um, feel free to put a message on here and, uh, and ask him a question. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll know how to, to see it, but I, I tried to <laughs> I just figured it out, Tom, Paul. Yeah, you figured it out. See, we're, we're yes. new to my darling wife is watching me. I better watch out what I uh -oh. say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if, you, if anybody has a question, just put it in the comments and we'll see it. Um, <laughs> and we can we can ask that uh, that question to Richard. But um, Tom, do you have anything else maybe specific well, that you wanted uh, to say? You know, I, I don't want to go down the whole financial planning path, but Richard, is there anything on the financial side? I know people are... Are, are out of work and there, there's, I mean, we're gradually coming back. Is there anything people should, should be wary of or, 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 or think about that you can, you can suggest in this, in this time? Don't change anything maybe. You know, it, it's, it, it all depends on the individual or the family. The biggest thing is just patience. Um, I mean, we didn't see what happened. Like if you're an investor, you're probably, very concerned about your your investment portfolio, you know, depending on your age, if you're retired or close to retirement. I mean, the markets um, before COVID hit um, and we saw market corrections starting at the end of February. Um, the markets were at all time highs. They went back about um, 40 something percent. Um, through March, first part of April. And then till about now, the thing is the markets have came back up 30%. So if you weren't patient and you pulled out at the wrong time, you missed on getting 30% of your money back. Yeah. Or 30% actually is more than 30% of your money. I mean, you're missing out on the growth return. So if you're an investor, just be patient. Things will get back to normal. Once they get back to normal, then make sure your advisor is um, rebalancing where you're at for maybe, because the markets historically over a hundred years, they go up, they go down. Um, I always use the analogy, just think of when we were kids, if you had a yo-yo and you're playing with your yo-yo, walking up a hill or a flight of stairs. So it goes up and down, but you're moving up the staircase of life yeah. and with your investments and yeah. they will get up there. The problem is a lot of people react emotionally and they go in the market at the wrong time and they get out of the market at the wrong time. And that's why a lot of people don't make any money. Um, yeah, we always say it's a long-term uh, uh, thing, right? And, and Yeah. I mean, we take a lot of time to just try to get our clients to figure out, you know, where's your risk tolerance for today? 
if there's a big hiccup or if there's a big spike, it shouldn't change. I mean, we, my job is to make sure you don't get too greedy and that you don't get too depressed. So try to keep you at an even keel. Um, for other people, if you're not so much with the investments, I mean, the other thing that people have sort of worried about a little bit is what, what has COVID made us all do? It's made us look in the mirror and say, geez, I guess something could happen to us. We don't have control of our health and our well-being as we all think. I mean, I'm often told by uh, clients and prospects, well, I don't plan on getting sick. I don't plan on dying. Well, of course, none of us do. Um, but we should plan for the, you know, unfortunate incidents where it happens before we're ready for it. Um, and one thing we've seen, Paul, you asked before we went on air what, what it's been like lately. And I've said, well, business has been pretty steady and busy lately. So we, we're getting a lot of our clients just wanting to revisit their plans for, you know, what if I get sick or what if, God forbid, I, me or my spouse or somebody that we care about passes away. And even if it's their parents for estate, their estates and that. And we're, we're spending time just listening and talking and helping people work that out. So, so we, have, we have a question. Um, um, what, what is one of the most influential investing books you can suggest for the new investor? And I, I got to say, say, jump in on this one. And, and probably the Financial Fitness Pack, the 47 Principles is a good one. Um, but, but anything that you can suggest there, Richard? I mean, for, for, for foundational principles of managing your own emotions. Yeah, Tom, I agree. I think that's a, it's a great book to start with. Um, who asked the question, Tom? Uh, Leanne. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, to say, well, here's a specific book that's going to help you make a million dollars in the next 10 years. I don't think there is one. Um, because Buy we, low, sell high. we would all be millionaires. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot of books. I've again, like Paul said, watch what you read, you know, if it's free or that. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. Um, and there's some really good books just, uh, and we try to tell our clients, we're not here to just tell you what you should do. We want to educate. Um, and there's a lot of good foundational books. I mean, I can, I, I off the top of my head, I'd have to, uh, I'll go look for a couple of titles and I can post that into your. Yeah. Into yeah. And every, every planner may have something different that they might recommend to their own, uh, their own clients as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're, you're looking for. I mean, there's some really good books about trying to teach kids how to save. Again, like you, you mentioned, the, the principles from, um, from Oren Woodward and Chris Brady's on the financial fitness program. I mean, those are good foundational things for all kids. And I don't know how much time we have left, but I could, if I could tell a quick story, Paul and Tom, you've heard this before. So our oldest daughter, before she, uh, when she moved out, she's working in Toronto as a photographer and, and doing that. And her dream was always she wanted to go to Greece. She wanted to, you know, hop through, do island hopping through Greece and get to spend her birthday in Germany um, around Oktoberfest. And um, so we said, that's a great idea, but you got to save the money to do it right? You're working now. So I lent her and gave her, or actually gave her the, the green box and she went through it, read it, made notes, gave me a whole dissertation on what she learned. And in the year before she saved all the money she needed to pay cash for her flight, her Airbnbs, everything. And also what she read, she knew how to be thrifty with her money when she was there. And she went on that trip, came back and wasn't in any debt. Perfect. So I mean, that, that to me is, did it make her a lot of money? No, but it, it allowed her to achieve one of her dreams that she had, go do a, a nice trip. And she was able to do it with cash. A lot of people today, they just take out that plastic that the bank loves to give to the kids as soon as they graduate from university. And then that $2,000 trip, they're spending, taking five years to pay back. And how much did they spend an in interest? So, I think they're waiting yeah. at the doors when they come in with those cards now. So 
Oh, they, yeah, they they go right on campus and give them yeah. the cards to the students. So not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just about like you said, education to know how to how to manage yeah. it properly. So there's a lot of good books for you know foundational principles for kids. I think for adults too. There's um, you know how technical they want to get into. I mean, there's all sorts of things that I would read, but there's there's lots of information. But look for, I mean. I always see anyone that writes a book and they spend half the book um, being negative about other people's ideas, concepts, or products. I just file those books under G. I mean, the books I enjoy reading are the ones that they just, they explain the topic or they explain their own thoughts, but it's a positive book. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like talking, like if you ever go talk to Paul, he's not going to spend a half an hour being negative about somebody else he's just going to talk positively the whole time and yeah, i wouldn't want to read a book that spends half of his time being negative about someone else's ideas or concepts yeah, yeah. yeah. someone's going to talk bad about someone else to you then when you're gone that's the first thing that they're going to do to somebody else right and that yeah. really comes under the category under be careful who you hang out with yeah because yeah. i mean if you if you hang around with the dog eventually you get fleas um, and, and, um, and, and Richard, you know, the whole point of this and to really sum this whole thing up here is to hear someone's dream, struggle, victory. And I, I, I've heard that story of your daughter, um, from you when, when that happened and man, as a father and a great father, both you guys, great parents. And, but you look at, you told us your dream, you told us some struggles and then your, your victory is, is your daughter. It's our kids for us that have, I mean, we're, we all have kids. So for that's really become sometimes in life, your victories, me watching my kids have success. It's my victory too. I, I, I enjoy it more than they do sometimes when I watch them have a victory. And if you want to help your kids, finances is where you need to start. Like basic finances, like R Richard said, some great books um, that are just basic kids books that that you know 12 13 14 15 16 you can start ingraining them with good solid financial principles and and richard's company's rk life and i know because if you have a family and you're a client of his he's not afraid to help anybody whether it's the kids or the adults he's got ammunition to help people and their families move forward because you know you can you can uh, i've definitely set up if i pass away my family's taken care of but man, imagine instilling the right knowledge as well into your family if anything were to happen. That's because I know some people say, oh, I'm not planning on dying. Well, none of us are going to get out of here alive, right? We're all going to die. Um, but knowing is and, and preparing and setting up is so important. And Richard, that's what you do. And that's why if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And, and, and I know that that's exactly the life you're living because you love what you do. You're going out there, you're serving the community, you're serving people. And all three of us pretty much are loving what we do. And it's a blessing. And, and I don't take that lightly. I wake up every day and I try to serve. I try to help any way that I can, no matter what I'm doing. And, and I'm thankful for both you guys in my life, for sure. And I'm excited that um, we've sort of came up with this idea to interview local people, because hearing from you today, it's an inspiration. And I know a lot of other people as well will be inspired from this. So um, are, anybody else have anything? To share before we shut her down richard anything you good can't think of anything tom okay well a great great chat today i i'm i'm uh I, I, thank you so much for 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 joining us again richard uh really it was a lot of fun yeah, yeah, yeah you. it was and 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 i know i mean when the three of us are together it always we always have a good time and and i, and I think it's from the everything we talked about the positive the supportive and and um um the, just the relationship that we have based around that. So thanks again. And uh, I guess we'll uh, see you all next time. See you have, later. Have a great My day. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye guys.